Welcome to ELD Device Driver Training. We have the PCT, is what they're calling out, PeopleNet Connected Tablet. Uh, we're going to do a day in the life of logging in. This screen is what we are familiar with. You will enter your driver ID and your password and click the sign on. At this point, the log data is all being brought up, and that might take some time. Once it is, you can click OK. There's some information there, some logs on this ELD requiring your action. You have some unidentified driving records, uncertified logs, and some other uncertified logs. So it's going to prompt you on things that you need to address. So at this point, there's nothing you need to do with your logs. You will just click OK. And this screen will pop up to continue your login process. You'll see a preview of your available hours. When you're ready to select a duty status, select the status icon. If you hit cancel, it's going to completely boot you off of the PeopleNet unit, and you'll have to put in your password and ID again. So we'll click status. And at this point, you want to select the on-duty driver. You will not ever use the on-duty not driver. Um, SB stands for sleeper berth. On YM is on duty yard move and off PC is off duty personal conveyance move. So we're gonna choose the status of on duty driver. After signing in and selecting the on driver status, the driver will be asked to verify and add remove shipments then prompted through the DVIR process. This is the shipment screen of managing shipments. You'll plug in what load number you're under and click add and it'll populate over on the current shipment side. At the top of the screen, you see that there is a little red file. That's for shipments. The trailer is, the red trailer is for the trailer number and the other triangle with the exclamation point, that's for the unidentified driver. At this point, we're just managing shipments, so we will add it and then click next when you're done. And after you add it on your logs, that file, red file icon will disappear. Then you'll be prompted to do the DVIR request. So you click on request DVIR. Once it's received, you'll select OK. The odometer and location should automatically populate for you. You want to verify the data for the DVIR is correct and then select next. You want to hit yes, safe to operate, and then select done. If the equipment is not safe to operate at that point, you do want to get a hold of dispatch, call maintenance, and make sure you are operating the equipment safely. A day in the life reviewing and updating logs. This is the home screen that we all know. It's just the e-driver log portion that is has changed. You want to select the e-driver log icon to get to that e-driver log. This is the new ELD e-driver log home screen. Um, so you see the green with you have 7 hours 38 minutes available to drive. And that'll change as the day goes on. Um, it'll change from a green to yellow and then red. And that basically is the countdown of when you need to take your 30 minute break. So you see here that Bob, Bu Bob Butters is on duty status at 2.24 p.m. right now. If you see the, see the option on the bottom with the orange in the corner, that means that there's something that needs to be addressed there. The top left option button up here, that's the same as the option button at the bottom. So you can just click on that. Either one of those will take you to the same place. And you're going to see right here you have a couple different things that need addressed. You have an unidentified driver and review logs. We're going to go ahead and review the logs at this point. And this is what the logs look like. So right now it looks like you do need to certify the logs, but before you do that, the option in red, you're, it's showing that the safety manager proposed an edit that the driver forgot to go off duty. This driver tried to certify, but he couldn't because you had to accept or reject those proposed edits. So first, we just want to highlight that with your finger. And then you're going to want to go ahead and accept that. If that was not you, the driver, at that time, which it should have been, and it's a proposed edit, then you would reject it and you would have to annotate the reason why. 
So go ahead and highlight it and accept it, and then it pops you back to the unidentified driver. So we're gonna highlight that. That'll take you to the unidentified driver issue on your logs. So on 117, we have Bob Butters. We have four miles there. He was in Brooklyn Center, Minnesota. Yeah, that was Bob Butters. So he's like, what we need to do at this point, we need to highlight it and accept that those unidentified driver miles. So what you want to pay attention to here is a lot of details. You have the start time at 8.48 p.m., the end time's 8.52, starting location, Brooklyn Center, Minnesota, same ending location. You got the four miles there. So highlight it and accept it. And at this point, after you make any changes, you do need to certify your logs for that day, for that change. So when you certify the logs, you are going to plug in your password every time. Put it in, click Agree, and it pops you back to here. At this point, we are going to want to add a shipment number. All right, so from this screen, you have up on the top, you got the red file folder for the shipment. We're gonna click on shipment to add that. So you plug it in, you click add, and it's gonna populate under the current shipments. This is what's gonna be showing on your log. So you definitely wanna make sure that you, the current shipment that you're hauling is over on that left side. Next, you wanna make sure that you add the trailer. So click on trailers, you wanna Plug it in under Add Trailers, click the plus Add button, and it'll populate on the left under Current Trailers. And as you see above, the little trailer icon did disappear. Anytime you need to remove those trailers, you just highlight it with your finger and click the Remove button. And then the DVIR will pop up for that trailer. Um, to review your logs, click on the Log button, and there is the standard grid of a log for one day. Um, it's a little different than what we've seen before. On the bottom, on the on-duty, the purple and pink, that's showing the on-duty yard moves. And on top, the orange and yellow area right there, that's a PC off-duty move. And then the green on the log is just the standard off-duty or on-duty like that we all know. So when you click on the top left, the little arrow button, that will change the date so you can view other dates of the log grids. So the best practices for logging in and driver interview. Um, driver ID and password are provided by the company administrator. You will receive that as a new driver after you finish orientation. Uh, make sure you do maintain the shipment and trailer information and keep it accurate for the loads that you're hauling. When reviewing your log information, driver needs to pay attention to the details. This is a day in the life, rest breaks and exceptions. Um, there are automatic duty status changes. For driving, when you are ready to begin driving, the device will automatically throw you into the driving status once moving five miles per hour or faster. On duty, not driving. Once you are completely stopped for five minutes, the device will move the driver into an on duty, not driving status that is time stamped when the vehicle stopped moving. Yard moves. When selecting a yard move, which is an on duty status, you will be able to move at a customer but must keep your truck under 20 miles per hour. Remember to change to a rest break when done moving at a customer or it will automatically log you into on duty, not driving status after five minutes. Once you leave the customer and go over 20 miles per hour, it will automatically switch you to the drive line. It will also pop up as a yard move to enter. We want you to enter the customer location that you're at for the yard move. So from this screen, we're gonna change our status and we're gonna show how to log a yard move. So you would click on status, go to on duty yard move. Um, from here, your log's gonna be stamped with your location, so you would just wanna put in what customer you're at. So here, I will just put in Kohl's, act like we're in Finley, Ohio, and submit. That's all you have to do for yard move, and you can see over here, current status, your on-duty yard move. Um, and then I'm also gonna show you how to log a PC. So let's say you're done moving around at the yard, you picked up your bills, and you're gonna PC to a truck stop. From here, you'd wanna go to status, you want to do off-duty personal conveyance. And then you want to annotate what you're PCing for. So we're going to say PC to 
truck stop and submit and it's automatically once I'm changing changing to a PC move it's already pulling up a DVIR so it pulls up the truck and trailer that I already had in the system and you're still just going to confirm that there's no defects highlight the trailer no defects finished and then you're good and you see you're an off-duty PC move Manual duty status changes at any time while stopped, a driver can change their duty status from the e-driver log menu by selecting the status icon. Please note that the only way a driver can go off duty at the device without logging out is to go into rest break status. There is no longer an option for choosing on duty driving. It's just you get in the truck, you drive away. Once you go over five miles per hour, it will just put you into the driving status move. Also on the yard move status, just make sure that you do keep that under 20 miles per hour. I'm um, in the top right of your screen for when you're ready to take your 30 minute break or if you're ever ready, you just want to go on an off duty status for like maybe you're a shipper and after you're in a yard, yard move, you just click on the rest break. You want to confirm it and click OK. And you see here, so on the left, the current status that's showing Bob Butters is off duty at 119 at 338. He's going to gain time at 408 p.m. I would highly recommend you wait to at least 31 minutes before driving away. When you're done with that 30 minute break, you can click the stop break or you can just go ahead and drive away and it will switch you to that on, on that driving status move. When you push the stop brake, it's going to give you this pop-up box for the choose status. So at that point, you're going to choose what status you want to do right now, which this one's showing on driver. All right, from the home screen, if you go to eDriver logs, um, did want to show you one more thing. This little button, it's the circle with the triangle in it. If you click that, it's actually going to give you a breakdown of driving hours that you've done for the day. So work shift driving still says that this driver has 11 hours still to drive today. Um, the work shift rest break is basically seven hours, 40 minutes. Work shift duty is that you have six hours, 21 minutes before you have to take that 30 minute break. And then the cycle duty is gonna be the countdown off your 70 hours for the week. So that's just a little update there. And if to close that, you just click on that. Um, best practices for rest breaks and exceptions. Drivers do need to pay close attention to their gain time at. Our current policy is that drivers are not allowed to take an exception on their ELDs. It is our policy to dispatch and operate in compliance with the Federal Motor Carrier Safety Regulations regarding the hours of service limits on the 78, 11, and 14 hour rules. Roadside inspections. From the regular home screen, you would click on the roadside icon. You can also access roadside inspection through the options menu from the eDriver logs menu. The grid of the log will populate for the officer. So you want to click on the data file transfer and this is what you will see. So the officer will give you a file comment that you can plug in there and he's going to tell you either what mechanism the information will be transmitted, either email or web service. Every time after you put in, when you want to transfer your log information, you will have to enter your password. Um, we're going to act like um, we're going to do a roadside inspection. As shown before, that's how you get to roadside. To annotate a roadside inspection, you want to go to your logs. Let me get out of here. Go to your logs. <laughs> you drive your logs again. And you want to go to your events, and you want to basically scroll down. If you just had an inspection, it'd be all the way down at the bottom. So you want to find that on-duty move. And let's say this right here was a DOT inspection. So to annotate it, you just highlight it, and you annotate and you just type in there, DOT inspection. So a clean inspection with a log annotation of that, that'll earn you $100. And like you see right there at 232, there's the little comment DOT inspection, and then just click done when you're done. 
So best practice for roadside inspections. When you're stopped in a roadside inspection, you need to be sure you are in on-duty status. You must find the change of duty status on your logs and annotate the log with the remarked DOT inspection. Clean inspections with a remarked log will earn you $100. Remember to turn in all inspection reports with your paperwork that week. All right, so when you're completely ready to sign out of the truck for weekend home time, you want to go to eDriver Logs, click on your status. You're going to do off-duty sign out. Um, it might be pulling in your log data. Um, right here, it's going to prompt you on a DVIR post trip for your truck and trailer. We're going to say no defect there, no defect there, finish, and voila! When you see that screen, you're officially signed out of the truck. So best practices for logging out, be sure to add your post-trip DVIR before logging out or going into sleeper berth for your 10-hour break. You should log out by going to the status icon. The driver's log should not remain on the vehicle even if they're the only driver using the vehicle. Always log out when you're at the pole yard for service or any shop for repairs. Log out when leaving truck for weekend home time. Also, once a week, we want you to do diagnostics on the PeopleNet. Click on Options. Click on Diagnostics. You'll see this form come up. If there's any kind of issues with the device, usually it will correct itself in 24 hours. If the issue continues, you definitely want to get a hold of dispatch right away. So make sure you do run diagnostics on your unit once per week. If your PCT has a major malfunction, you must notify dispatch in writing within 24 hours. So either shoot us an email, text us, um, Paul will route you back to the yard for repair, and we only have eight days to get the malfunction fixed or the unit replaced. You must operate on paper logs if the PCT has a compliance malfunction.